Hey everyone, this is Marty from howtomakemobilegames.com on November the 2nd, 2016 and it's a Wednesday here in Manchester, England. A pretty sunny, this this glare is probably disturbing the video a little bit. I tried to turn around a touch but the sun is directly kind of in my face there so my apologies for the, the visuals on the camera. Uh, I was trying to move away a little bit, like turn around, but then it made the back too bright and then my face was too dark. I need some kind of studio or something to do these videos. Um, I just got this uh, really bright lamp, uh, this uh, Season Effective Disorder lamp. Uh, basically, it's a bright light for um, people who live in dark climates like in England uh, because we get depressed. I was going to use that as like the light to light my face, but then I ended up looking like Frankenstein's monster. So I thought, no, I better not do that. Anyway, this video is about the question that I saw on the a forum a few days ago, or I think maybe last week. Uh, I think it might have been XDebugX um, or, or Java EXP. Sorry if, if it was somebody else, I can't remember. But I think you asked the question on one of the free sections where you said, is, is VR worth it? Is it worth developers building for VR right now? Um, in regards to uh, you know actually getting the smaller games published and out there into the app stores. So I wanted to just share my thoughts and feelings on that and also share some statistics with you as well. Uh, because obviously VR is a very hot kind of topic right now, a hot industry in terms of investment. Uh, I don't know if it's hot as in it's made a ton of revenue already. I don't know about that at all. Um, and it could be just one of those gimmicks of the... Um, uh, you know, sort of of the month or the year or whatever it may be, like 3D TV. So, um, so why don't I just uh, let me just start on the revenue side as well first, because then I then I can lead on to the the next points of my thoughts. Uh, we published this uh, lazy boss lazy boss paper truck VR game um, last month. I think it was like early October. Uh, if I look highlight there, uh, yeah, initial release October twentieth. Uh, this is on iOS. Uh, it's a dollar, one dollar download, and so far we have had 17 downloads. So, uh, what is that to us? Roughly 13 dollars or something like that. If I look up the revenue, because it comes from different countries, and so it has to be converted to dollars in Afghani, so it might be not exactly 70 percent, uh, but 11.37 dollars to us. That is since October the 23rd when it was the initial release. Um, so not a ton of money, obviously. Uh, it wasn't a big game. It's just you, you. It's just like a paper toss game where you throw the paper into the uh, into the waste basket, and you've got to try to look it uh, against the wind. The wind is blowing left and right, and you've got to look in the uh, against the wind so that it sort of curls into the basket. So it's a nice little fun game. We've got world global leaderboards in there, but it's by no means a big game. It wasn't like a big marketing release, or we didn't do any kind of. Um, uh, CPI campaign that's cost per install to push it up the charts or anything like that. So, but that's how much we've made so far. 1137 is for a paid game, maybe it's not too bad. I mean, if we were to throw a, let's just say, a driving game on the App Store for a um, uh, dollar, it probably wouldn't make any downloads at all because there's a million other uh, driving games out there that players can download for free. So, uh, on the Viveport developer console side, uh, we've only made, uh, since this is only in China at the moment, uh, 29 RMB, which is around three pounds, which is around four dollars. And so that is like six, six purchases. And we've set it to pretty much one dollar. Now, this is only available in China at the moment. Uh, the PC version of Viveport is available worldwide. So we might get a version uh, published on there. So. At the moment, not a lot of revenue there as well. We have made for this same game, this Lazy Boss game, um, on Amazon, I think it maybe is five downloads. Uh, and that, again, is a paid $1. So, you know, total is what, um, if it's five purchases, we'll get about $4, uh, $15 for there. And then what did I say here? It was around $4, did I say? Something like that. Uh, I don't know if that's to us, so... Uh, I feel I've lost my count now. Is that fourteen or something? I can't remember. Four to, about fourteen or fifteen dollars total, something like that. Okay. Uh, ever since it was launched in October twentieth. So, um, is it worth doing VR games right now? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's it's a little, 
I mean, it's your judgment based on what I've just told you in terms of the revenue that we're making. Now, we just put this game onto the store. We took this, this lazy boss actually took around one month to build. Um, and so we've not made the revenue back on that yet at all. Like the cost, it, the cost it was to actually uh, make the game about nine hundred dollars. Um, that's based on the time. It's not made its money back, and it probably won't make its money back for several months. I would say, and then it becomes profitable after that. The way that I see uh, VR games is the way that I see um, all small games. Like for example, like. This game is very small. If we're going to make small VR games, there's not going to be any different to mobile games. Um, players are going to see a small game that isn't deep, doesn't have a lot of content, and they're not going to be willing to pay for it. It's just going to be another snack game again. So I don't think it's going to be like, oh, VR is like the, the golden you know ticket to money or anything like that. I don't think that's going to happen. The... The reason why I think, say, iPhone uh, in 2008 when it was released or uh, 2007, whichever year, or when the App Store was released, why did that make good money? Well, one reason was that the iPhone itself, just, uh, just the iPhone, was like an innovative, amazing product that everybody wanted. I know it wasn't the first touchscreen phone or anything, but it was, to me, it felt like the one that was the coolest thing out there and everybody was really interested when my wife first saw one from my friend in Shanghai, she wanted one instantly, you know. So there was that immediate player base. There was that immediate customer base through the app stores because the iPhone sold, you know, millions worldwide, okay, uh, you know, within the first few months or however much it was. So that immediately gave um, a channel to a lot of players, a lot of users immediately. Now, VR on the other side, on the other hand, is not one of those things that everybody needs or wants right now. And they're not even aware of it very much. And I'm talking like the general public here. Everybody wants a phone. Everybody needs a phone, pretty much, you know? So everyone is going to get a phone and they usually want the coolest phone or the coolest phone that they can get, of course. Um, so it is, I mean, you know, if you contrast that to say VR, you don't need VR as a phone, as a, as how can I say, a VR headset isn't something that you need. It's something that people will want and maybe get. So, and I don't think the sales have been anywhere near sort of like smartphones worldwide. So there's not going to be that much um, uh, penetration in, in terms of a lot of people having a VR device with the VR app store installed, whether it's Vive ports or uh, Gear VR, the Oculus you know, mobile store or whatever store. Uh, like Baofeng in China or something like that. So immediately you're not going to have that big player base. Uh, the second thing is...